announcement. The hemp revolution will not be televised. I repeat, the hemp revolution will not be televised. Welcome to the Hemp Revolution podcast, the global hotspot for the buzz and the cannabis. You can hear the stories of the green rush from the dreamers who are writing the rules, innovating the business, and changing history forever. Immerse yourself with the fascinating stories from the leaders in the hemp health revolution to learn how we are changing the game forever. Introducing your hosts, James Brinkerhoff and Sonia Gomez. What's up and good morning. This is Sonia Gomez coming to you from Denver, Colorado. This is another badass episode with female entrepreneurs in the cannabis and hemp movement. This is another episode of the Hemp Revolution. I'm your host, Sonia Gomez, and I'm so excited to be here today. What I feel is in the face of royalty. Our guest, Ellen Thatcher, is the first female cannabis company owner in the state of North Carolina. She opened the first online dispensary and brick and mortar in Charlotte, North Carolina, created the first brand out of North Carolina to hit major conventional grocery store shelves. Prime Sunshine is in over 100 grocery store pharmacies around the United States and is the first brand to be sold in a hospital. What an amazing accomplishment. Ellen founded the company after being attacked and mauled by a pit bull and enduring many surgeries and a long, hard recovery to follow. Please give a warm welcome to our guest, Ms. Ellen Thatcher. Hi, Ellen. Hey, Sonia. That is quite a very warm welcoming. And I just want to tell you, I really appreciate that because I never started my business. It just, I didn't start it. And it kind of started me and it was an accident and it was so many years ago. And just the weeks and and months and years that it's gone to have an industry grow up kind of behind having a company that started before an industry that was created to hear that acknowledgement, you know, not feeding my ego, but to be acknowledged like that. I'm looking back at the past years and it's like, wow, okay. Yeah. You really have actually done something. So thank you. And I, I, coming from you, that's a huge honor and I'm very appreciative. So thank you. Well, I'm so grateful. This is, first of all, no offense, gentlemen, but I have an affinity towards female entrepreneurs in this space. There's not enough of us owning our power in this space. And So it's always an honor for me to be able to showcase and tell the stories and and really share the journey of the entrepreneurs who are a part of pioneering this industry, especially in the more conservative states. So (laughs) I know that you have come through a significant number of trials and tribulations to get to where you are. You're celebrating the moving into your new home place and it all looks very glamorous right now. You have your retail store, your your office, your, you know, distribution set in place. But why don't you talk to me a little bit about the beginning stages of your business and, and how this industry ended up scooping you up and getting you involved? So very interesting, you know, and it's interesting even thinking about having a business started when I didn't really start one. I was on at the time that I was mauled by the dog. How are you mauled by a dog, by the way? So I was living, going through a divorce at the time and husband gave me nothing. So moved out, did it all on my own. Four years later, still nothing, but that's another story. And (laughs) many court hearings and nothing, but I was let, I just simply let my dog out my back door and the dog who attacked my dog first was being babysat through what's one of the, the dog walking services. I forget the name. I've wanted through, to forget the name of it. Through a dog walking service. Yes. It's a national company. And the dog just bolted right onto my deck and started mauling my dog. I have a standard poodle and he was only a year and a half, I think at that time. Mm-hmm. And he was wedged into a corner and I moved the table. And when I did that, the dog then mauled me and he severed kind of like an artery in this part of my hand and then broke the 
ulnar bone and crushed it in eight places. So I bled out in my backyard. The girl was really young and somehow she got the dog off of me, but I kind of feel like God or whoever's in charge. What happened was the lights just turned out. So everything just went to dark and I, and, and I woke up in the hospital. So. Oh my God. Yeah. I mean, I, I had never, yeah, I, you know, you just, it happened so quick. I mean, it was probably less than a minute, you know, but it changed my entire life. It changed the path of my life. It changed the journey mm -hmm. of my life. At the time I was on 300 milligrams of Wellbutrin combined with 60 milligrams of Prozac. 30 milligrams nightly of restorol for sleep, going through menopause with hot flashes, suffering already with anxiety and depression, battling that for many years. For two years, I could barely get out of bed. I mean, I just, I couldn't function. And my memory was completely deteriorating. And I don't know if that was, it's still not great, but it's a hell of a lot better. Excuse my French. Yeah, it's the stress, it's anxiety, it's depression, like that literally dissolves your memory. And I think a good description would be a hot mess, just a hot mess. <laughs> literally, Sorry, going through menopause that, too, just a, you know, just like a hot mess. And I lost a lot of friendships. I mean, my life was just very dark. And a friend of mine, older brother, brought me a bottle of, we didn't even, I don't even think we called it CBD back then. I'm not sure if it had a name. I knew nothing about it. When I told my kids about it, they said, oh yeah, mom, it's marijuana, but you just don't get high. You know, so they knew about it. I didn't know about it. And I just took it. I was drinking anything I can get my hands on and that, I was drinking that. I mean, it just, it didn't matter. I was trying to do anything to feel better. So on top of going through a physical trauma, I was living inside of mental trauma. And after about... I would say six weeks. I didn't attribute anything to the oil that he gave me, but I remember walking out of my brother's apartment. I had to, I moved into his closet. I didn't have anywhere to live at that time and couldn't go back to work. The closet was unair conditioned and unheated, but it was the only place I had to go at that time and, and I couldn't work. So, but I remember the day that I walked out of the apartment and saw the blue sky. And I was like, wow, look at that. The sky's blue. Isn't it pretty? And the sun is shining. It was like some portal opened up of the smoke cleared. And I just, I had a feeling of hope. No Prozac or Wellbutrin or Boost Par or any of the other drugs that went on ever made me feel, I don't hopeful. know if euphoria is the right word, but hopeful. And then I was on a website reading, you know, stuff about, CBD oil and the one I was taking just kind of stopped working. Mm -hmm. And then I did research and found out that a lot of the larger brands are, they buy, you know, there's such a demand they're buying from lots of different processors. Mm -hmm. So to ha have something consistent for someone who was suffering with some health conditions, I needed that consistency. I didn't know that at the time. I know that now but maybe it would help with my sleep and I'd get a new bottle and the next bottle did not. Or one would help with my anxiety and then I would realize my anxiety would come back. So there just wasn't any consistency. And I was a medical investigative reporter at University of Florida. That's what I went to college for. And I just started to do, I have access to some archives at University of Florida Shands Hospital, which is a research and teaching hospital. Mm -hmm which I have access to, and I'm still involved with the journalism school and started doing my investigative research and found out that this was cannabis. I didn't know that there was hemp and marijuana. So I started just learning what was I putting in my body and had access to a friend of mine in Israel who gave me access to studies and research that we don't have access here in the States. And I got connected with Dr. Mushulam and some Israeli scientists and just started learning. I then found a seed and a strain. God bless you. A seed and a strain that dates back about 6,000 years, but the farm has owned it for 210 years. It was brought over on a steamship from England in the early 1800s. 
how did you get your hands on the seeds? I was I reading found, that in your bio. <laughs> I found the farm. Now, I didn't, none of that meant anything back then, right? Like it means something now, but when I was just learning and gathering, I didn't even have that information at that time. That, I've, I got that information later from somebody in public relations. So that farm brought a very famous movie star in the early 90s onto the farm, arranged to have him arrested on marijuana charges. Then he was acquitted. Then the defense attorney became the governor of Kentucky. Our farm president sued the DEA and won, and they began the legalization of uh, and fighting for the hemp, for the legalization of hemp all over the world 24, 25 years ago. Oh my God. There's a lot of history in our bottles. It's, you know, we're not just buying from a processor and putting a label on it. I mean, there is a lifetime of genetics. That seed in 1937, when federal marshals came to the farm, they took the farm at gunpoint burned the crops, got rid of the hemp. Then farmhands actually smuggled that seed into Canada where it was vaulted and held under lock and key for 81 years before sent back to the farm. Wow. And what's really interesting is the plant, and I didn't, none of this meant anything so many years ago, but the plant just grows the bud. It doesn't produce sticks, stalks, leaves, or branches. So our <laughs> all bud formula. I am. I was dying when you read that, and I wasn't sure if you were being facetious, just like mocking the federal definition of industrial hemp and like what pieces of the plant were appropriate to use. I was like, oh, if she's this cheeky, we're gonna have a good time. But you're literally being serious. The plant doesn't grow. <laughs> doesn't grow anything but the buds. Yeah, I mean, I, I can show you a picture. And when I took the picture, I had never even seen other plants. It was that many years ago. So at that time, it didn't mean anything. <laughs> this is great. I love it. Well, do you want me to pull up the picture on the phone? Yeah, let me see oh, the picture. Okay. I'm like leaning in to get a better look. I want some of those seeds. <laughs> I don't know how good you're going to be able to see it, but let's see. It's interesting when you go back through your phone, I can see, you know, the first bottle I ever sold. I can tell where I was in my life. Um, oh. Then the, you know, awful labels that followed and <laughs> kind of the, the journey. But that's really what it is, right? I mean, you never, you, you think, I always tell my clients, you know, we are a product of our best thinking and you absolutely, you can never tell like what thought, what idea, what, action item is going to be the thing to move the needle forward or help hit that next milestone. And, you know, it could be as simple as a brand, as complex as a name and a domain. It could be, you know, your formulation. You just, you never know what it's going to be. All it takes for an entrepreneur is to continue to innovate and to have the stick to that that is mandatory when owning your own business, especially in such a new and very exciting industry like cannabis and hemp, like it takes a certain level of stick to and the timelines, like the, what you're talking about, the documented timelines where you can see the growth, the evolution, the transformation, like you don't take the time to look at the artistry as it's being created, right? You're just no, so busy a- painting it. It's so interesting hearing that coming out of your mouth because it's not like something I think about. You know, I'm yeah. thinking about problems and fires that we're putting out. But when I took this picture, I what you can see. I can see it. You see it? Just that bud. Wow. You should send me that picture and we'll post it around the, in the article. Okay. So, yeah, that meant, I mean, when I took that picture that I didn't know that what other plants really look like. So, and how I started Prime Sunshine was, I just started, I was on all these groups for hot mess women on Facebook, you know, and we could just, it's just a place that you could go and to see, you know, secret groups I was in for relationships and menopause. And I have a hemangioma, I have a tumor on my spine. It's the size of a golf ball. It's called a hemangioma. And I have stenosis, degenerative disc disease, and L4, L5, C6, and C7. And there have been several times in my lifetime that I couldn't walk. And 
I used to go to the hospital so many times that they pulled my husband aside at the time, my ex-husband, and said, we think your wife is a drug addict because, in the, like, I was faking it. Never gave me an MRI or anything to kind of prove that I wasn't faking, that I couldn't walk. I mean, and I had two babies in, a, in diapers. So, you know, there was just, you know, I'm dealing with pain too. But, you know, when you deal with pain for so long, you don't even really think about it. You just live with it and, you know, and I was in so a hot mess group for women and I started sharing that holy tamale, the sky is blue, the sun is shining. I feel like, and I was still on Prozac, I was still on everything. And I just started sharing that I was feeling better. And there was one woman and we, she now resells for me in Indiana. She bought her first bottle from me and she has uh, fibromyalgia, but she was share. she started sharing that her flare ups, mm -hmm. the duration of them was not as long. Her migraines were basically, she was on Topamax for migraines and she didn't have to be on that anymore. She was on Tramadol, she didn't have to be on that, or Gabapentin didn't have to be on that anymore. And she started sharing to other mm -hmm. women. And I didn't even have a label on a bottle and I was just sending it to them for what I paid for it. I, I didn't, it wasn't a business. I just found some other hot mess women and started sending it to them. And I mean, maybe I put postage on top of it. I would go wait online at the post office. I mean, they paid for the postage. And then I was going through a divorce and the attorney said, you need, do you have a bit or the accountant said, you, you have a business and we need to see your taxes. And I'm like, I don't have a business that no, you are selling this liquid, which we weren't even allowed to sell in North Carolina at that time. <laughs> and, and I didn't even know, like, cause you just, there was no, nobody knew what this was. I just knew that it was helping me and it started helping other people. This lady, Shelly lives in a, like a cornfield in Indiana, <laughs> right? She doesn't have access to cannabis in Indiana and then she started telling people and then she started buying and reselling and it kind of just going through the divorce. I had to get an EIN number and sign up with the state and go through all of that. And then I already had a business before I had a business, I guess you could say. And then it just grew. And I, and I remember nobody knew about CBD and no doctors would talk to me. I was thrown out of Starbucks, Brugger's, restaurants, <laughs> Chinese buffets, and what I would do to teach people about cannabis. And I still have the box. I took a shoe box and put my CBD oils in it. And I wrote medical cannabis on it. And I would go to a restaurant and set it on the table. Or I would go through the Aldi's grocery store line and have it right in my cart. And it was obnoxious, but I wanted to teach people about cannabis in North Carolina. And I would just get in conversations in the grocery store lines with people. And that's also how I got thrown out because you can't have medical cannabis in a Chinese buffet restaurant, you know, but that's how I started. That's how I, I, I just carried this box around and I would put it on the table and it was really fun for kicks. We used to videotape people. <laughs> after church at the Starbucks across the street from a very conservative right-wing church, Jerry Falwell type place. And I would put it on the table at the Starbucks and it would just, it, I got thrown out of there every time I wasn't even allowed. I, I've never gone, I'm not even allowed back in there. I'm now I probably, could, but <laughs> it's just really fun to watch the people who came to the Starbucks after church, how irritated and angry my box made them. Oh so, my God, this is the best story ever. <laughs> I still got that box and we need to dip it in gold or something like that is literally the I best I story. I have ever. that box. Yeah. I, I know I have the box. So anyways, that's how prime sunshine started. I, I, I helped myself. And then what happened was once I started using the same seed, the same strain, the same soil, the same water, the same sustainable, agricultural method of growing, it gave me the consistency in the brand that I needed every month and naturally came off of Wellbutrin, Prozac, Restoral, Ambien, Boost Par, and then a whole other just, you know, Excedrin migraine, Advil, Tylenol, 
you know, I had, I had a whole medicine cabinet just with all that crap in it. And I remember taking a picture of it thinking, you know, maybe I should just keep this for the future, not knowing Prime Sunshine would be a brand and not knowing it would be a business. Mm -hmm. I really wish I had that because, you know, that's the old life. And now I don't even have a medicine cabinet. To, you know, I don't, I don't even have one. And in Charlotte, where I live, I went into lots of different health food stores and they would not purchase from me. And that's when I just said, okay, I'll have an online business. It was paying my bills at that point. And we built a nice little online business. And by the time I got back out to sell, CBD was on everyone's shelf. I didn't know it was going on out there, really. Well, no, I can't say everyone's shelves, but it was starting to go out on mm -hmm. some shelves. You could find it at a couple of the stores in Charlotte. And I actually went back to a couple of those stores and I'm like, hey, you know, we'd love for you to have Prime Sunshine. Well, they already had product. And I'm thinking, you know, I came to you two years ago and we're a local business and which is how we ended up getting into the grocery store chain because we are in the Bible Belt. We are local. We are going to be growing in South Carolina next year. Where's um, your farm now? So right now everything is coming out of Kentucky, but we're mm -hmm. having our third harvest in Nevada, which was the picture that you saw on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So big difference for me. Okay. I don't know about other people and there's great CBD brands out there. And I know an amazing few that are owned by women as well. But for me personally, it made a huge difference to have, and I'm always testing other brands, not if they're better, just for my own, you know, endocannabinoid system, a plant grown from a seedling as opposed to a clone makes a difference for me. Okay. A clone, I don't think anyone would say is genetically altered, but it is the female plant and it's a, you know, it's from another plant. It's not from a seed. It's from a clone. Typically, and also we do grow, there are parts on the farm that grow for other companies. Mm -hmm. Those clones are mature plants, so they're not in ground as long. Their roots don't go down as deep. And then also if a plant is grown in a greenhouse, we've got wonderful science to back up how great greenhouse lights are and the technology now that's available to farming and farmers, cannabis farmers and all kinds of farmers around the world. Mm -hmm. However, I have spoken to handfuls of scientists. You cannot under any circumstances outperform mother nature. Her sunshine, her moonshine and her starshine all provide a plethora a platform and a panel of phytonutrients that you cannot duplicate in a greenhouse under manufactured man-made lights. It's not possible. Agreed. Right? But we need the greenhouses because, you know, climate change and flooding and, you know, there's no crop insurance for farmers. So, you know, I, I kind of poo-pooed the whole greenhouse grow. And remember those plants are only grown they turn over those crops every three or four months mm -hmm. and a lot of them are grown in a pot mm -hmm. so our plants for now and for as long as we possibly can are grown from seedling outdoors under the moonlight the starlight and the, the sunlight and when i called the company prime sunshine i never knew how sunshine a plant grown under sunshine would be so different from my health than a plant grown in a greenhouse. It's amazing at the difference. I, I used to tell people when I was like in my dispensary, I had a brick and mortar dispensary business here in Colorado. And a lot of people were at the time still really uneducated about, you know, greenhouse versus outdoor versus, you know, clone versus seed, indoor grow. And everybody was really attracted to the indoor operations because they just produced this souped up, super sexy, super dense, hyper gloss, you know, 
it was like a pornographic bud, you know, like what you would see in Playboy or something. And next to, you know, an original strain that was grown in a greenhouse or even outdoors, it didn't look as sexy, but you could never touch the flavor, the effect, you know, like all of the things that make this plant so perfect in its natural form, you could never duplicate that inside. And, and I've been a part of this industry for a long time. I've seen a lot of different types of grows. My husband and I collectively have like, I don't know, 33 years, 35 years in the industry. And we've been a part of legislative develop. I mean, we've literally seen it all. And it was just amazing to see like, you know, the, the disconnect between the consumer and the farmer, what the farmer knows from working with the plant and, you know, tasting it at its different stages and different strains and knowing how the plant responds in different environments and how that translated to the consumer who just wants the sexiest, you know, most dense flower that they can find. But it's, you know, for me, it was flavorless, didn't have the same oils, that didn't have the same flavor profiles. And now we're starting to get a more educated consumer where they're, you know, they're looking for that sun grown. They're looking for, you know, they're okay with the hybrid systems and greenhouses. And my, my husband is a part of a major cultivation operation here in Colorado with a licensed facility doing restorative and regenerative farming natural Korean farming. So they build their own soil. They don't use any nutrients. It's all, it's all of the earth from the earth. It's just like this amazing, this amazing system and not too many people are doing it. Mostly you can find it out in California, but I'm in a hundred percent agreement with you. What, what happens to the plant from soil all the way to sale is such an important process. And I don't think that the farmer the geneticists, the, the people in the labs really get enough credit for what they're doing with these strains to create the consistency for the consumer. You know, and it's, it's it kind of blows me away. You were saying how many years you've been in the industry where here I was all alone in North Carolina. I didn't even know it was an industry. Well, you're in North Carolina, California. And <laughs> California is better... Saying- but there's certainly a plethora of information that's been available over the years, but it didn't relate to where I lived and it wasn't a part of anyone's life. And if anyone, you know, partook in cannabis, you know, you certainly wouldn't tell anyone that here. And even when I realized I had a business and I could pay my rent with it, people would say, Oh, Ooh, is that, is that marijuana? No, I would say I would never have anything to do with marijuana ever, never, not prime sunshine. No way. (laughs) This was was like a a year ago, still up until a year ago. And now from what I've learned, in fact, this is, I was in the grocery store this morning and, you know, they want to make hemp illegal in North Carolina. So if you get caught with hemp flour, you right you know, now they do. They're trying to ban it, and I think it's May of it's either May or December of 2020. But here I am in the grocery store line this morning. Woo! Okay, and it's like so. This is happening in North Carolina, and then I took some pictures in the grocery store this morning, and there was, you know, it's happening in our state, and whether the state officials and the legal entities and the sheriffs and the police like it or not, this is happening in our grocery stores. And then there was hemp milk. I took a picture of this morning. Oh yeah. That's my favorite. You've seen all this. Okay. In Colorado, we didn't have any of this in North Carolina. Here's granola, a picture of granola. Yes. So I was going to post that today on, on Facebook too. And some we have a lot of older customers and they come in and I'm finding out I mean some of them come in in diapers from you know having chemotherapy we pull down their pants and we get that cream on them and I have a lady who comes in she takes care of her she's got to be 80 and she babysits her grandchildren and she, her name is Minette she's a nurse she mm-hmm. comes in on her worst days and we load her up with some of our 2400 and I slap some pain cream down her pants and on her neck and I give her two Kratoms, which I love to mix with CBD as well for certain 
people, certain instances. And she goes out and has lunch with her grandchildren. You know, so like, who would have ever believed that a hot mess is now working with other hot messes and watching their lives change and their relationships with their grandchildren where they couldn't even cook. And I have a lady in Boston who got thrown out of her pain clinic up there Hmm. for testing positive. And she was like, gotta be in her eighties. Her name's Virginia. She's been buying for me for years now. (laughs) And she had the nurse call me and I sent them COAs to try to save her from being thrown out of her pain clinic. And she's like, you know what? Screw it. I don't even need the pain medicine anymore. Whatever pain level she's gotten down to was able, you know, she gauged how she felt on if she could wash the dishes and serve her grandchildren a meal. Mm -hmm. And she said, at this point, just with the CBD alone, I can babysit my grand, she's still tired after, but she could never do that before. She could have the grandchildren over, cook a great dinner, and clean up and send them home and then get into bed. She couldn't even get out of bed, you know, especially with flare up. So kind of went on a, a rant there, but. No, it's important to hear and to see, you know, the evolution of how people are being affected by this. I, I, it doesn't, I mean, the fact that you're experiencing this in such a conservative environment where most people at the demographic that you're talking about would shun the idea of using a cannabis or hemp based product, the receptiveness, the openness, and then paired with the results that folks are seeing. I think that this, these are the most important stories to tell for me. It's not about like, Oh, well our, you know, our product is made with virgin oil from the butt of a goat. Like this is not that. Wow, those are not, I get that? <laughs> <laughs> this is not, these are not the reasons why people are getting on board with the movement. This is not why people are joining the mission. People, people join this movement and become a part, an active member of a hemp revolution because it is a disruption to healthcare. People are no longer depending on their doctor's prescriptions. They're no longer depending on the pain clinics. They're, they're While you're speaking, I have chills, okay, all over my legs and all over my neck. I don't know why, but it's just, just, it's just, it's an amazing evolution of humanity and how we are taking control back from, from our medical system, back from our doctors. I mean, there's multiple layers and many generations of false information out there that we are working against right now. And while we are permeating the, I mean, the 60 to 80 year old demographic is the epicenter and source of the stigma. You know? I love every day, at least once a day, I have, well, I don't know how much I can say, but I can tell you, we have a lot of 80s and 90 year olds who love THC and <laughs> they would much rather have THC than tramadol, gabapentin, you know, any hydrocodone because they can function. And if you're already, you know, 80 to 90, and you've got the beginnings, a little bit of maybe dementia, maybe you've had some mini strokes. The fact that you can't get clarity on those drugs, right? And the fact that they can now have some clarity and that brain fog is, is removed and the quality of their life has improved. It's phenomenal to have watched this for this many years. I mean, I mean, people thought my own family told me to get a job at Marshall's, which is one of my favorite stores, right? <laughs> That's where I go for therapy. It's across the street from my office. Yeah. <laughs> and th- my brother yeah. said, and he eats his words every day. He says, just go to Marshall's and just get a job. Just get out of the house. I said, every morning when I woke up creating this company, I was running like a, like a race. And my brother's like, what are you rushing around for? I said, because people are going to find out about this and we have to be ready. You know, people are going to really know about this. I mean, I was up at 3.30 in the morning working sometimes 20 hours a day in a rush. And I didn't know why I felt like I had to rush, but I felt like I had to rush. I felt like I was rushing like a race almost. And I had no reason to because, and I don't know why, but I'm glad that I did. And I had mentioned to you about the older people because now versus a year ago, when I would never say the word marijuana out loud ever, not here. Okay, you just don't say it here. 
Now, if somebody comes into our office or my dispensary or on Facebook, I say, you say that word loud. And they'll say, this is just yesterday. You can go look at, I did a post and a woman said, oh, I'm all about hemp, but I just don't like THC. And I said, well, what do you like about hemp? She goes, well, the CBD. I said, you mean the cannabis oil? She said, yeah. I said, well, what do you think THC is? It's a CBD. You know, it's still part of the United States flag that Betsy Ross sewed had THC in it. That was okay for the United States. <laughs> uh, Henry Ford built an engine in 1939 that had THC in it. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, she's all about hemp, and then she's demonizing THC. Now, I suffer from generalized anxiety disorder, so THC is not a really good idea for me. <laughs> okay? It doesn't, you know... I get, I do get anxiety and paranoid and all that stuff. So, but you know, I'm learning about it and I make people say that word really loud because when they demonize that or anything about the plant at this point, I'll say, do you drink wine? Oh yes. I have my wine every night. So it's okay to move on closer to cirrhosis of the liver if you're drinking a bottle of wine every night. It's okay to take your two Tylenol for your arthritis or your relief, but you're poo-pooing a plant compound that's never killed anybody ever <laughs> in how many, 50,000 years? My brother took Embril, which is a regular prescription that doctors write for rheumatoid arthritis. Mm -hmm. And he listened to his doctor well, he took his last breath and choked to death in my arms. Embril killed him in four months. I gave him acute onset lymphoma. So it's also killed, and I don't want to you know, be wrong, but I think it's about 15,000 people mm. since it's been brought to market. Wow. Okay. And it's really they, significant. They tell you straight out on the commercial how it's going to kill you and what your death will look like while the family is playing with their Labrador retriever at a park throwing a football. And they do it, you know, with the nice music in the background and they tell you exactly how they're going to kill you. Just like that, right? And it killed my brother. He choked to death in the emergency room. It gave him acute onset lymphoma. And I said to this woman, I said, you know what? Not only was my brother a cannabis smoker his entire life and a dealer, <laughs> and a contributor to, you know, the cannabis movement in the 70s, he didn't kill him. So really don't come into my business and demonize a plant that's never killed anyone when you're sucking down a bottle of wine every night, taking Tylenol and leave and all your prescriptions from your doctor, which half of which, once we get them on CBD, they, I'm seeing people just get better because there's so many other side effects. I just... I'm seeing people come off of cholesterol medicine and their hip and joint pain is better. And I just found out that, you know, statins cause hip and joint pain. And I just, I, somehow I didn't know that was a side effect. My point is, even in just the last year, I wouldn't have said the word THC or marijuana. And now I want to, you know, I want to- Shouting from the rooftops. Absolutely. How has this changed your life? I mean, you, you've come through a pretty significant transformation, you know, hot mess to hottie katati. And you're like, you, you must be such an inspiration. I'm, I'm inspired. So I imagine that you're such an inspiration to many of the women in the communities that you were a part of while you were, while you were challenged. What does your life look like now in contrast? You're just moving into a new home. You're running this successful, thriving business. What is the, what does it look like now? It's still really hard. I mean, after the business, so personal life, I mean, I, you know, when you have a business, you almost, I don't really have one. It's, you know, it's unfortunate, but you know, the business consumes every day, pretty much of my time. I just started closing on Saturdays and not working on Sunday. So that's been, and it's my employee that said, you, you know, she didn't want to come anymore on Saturdays. I said, well, neither do I. And you know what? <laughs> so for oh, going on four years, I never took, I was working seven days a week, 12 to sometimes 20 hours at the beginning a day. And I was getting really burned out. And after the farm bill passed, I, I got thrown out of a quest to bank. So all my taxes were paid out of the bank, my QuickBooks, my payroll, 
just everything that you have when you set up a, a business account gets paid out of your business account and they yeah. threw me out of that bank. Wow. Then I was over at PNC Bank because I was told they, you know, would close their eyes and then I got thrown out of that bank. So finally got to another bank, which I'm not even going to say their name and am able to bank to put my money somewhere. And, you know, right about shortly after that, then our credit card processing blew up and I went without credit card processing for six months. So we lost a lot of the online business and almost having to like to the point of almost having to rebuild that business. So oh they probably had the retail business because it kind of offset that. Yeah. And then, you know, got the credit card processing up and then shut down again. Oh my God. So, so are you, is that, would you say that's one of the challenges you're still facing right now? Like what are some of the challenges? Absolutely not. I'm very, very blessed. I'm with two conventional regular banks that have taken my business. Amazing. Um, yes. I mean, regular BB and T and, and then we did the square beta. Awesome. So, I know so many people who are getting into the Square Beta right now. It's really great. As a matter of fact, I was just invited to the Square headquarters in New York. They invited me to come in because I'm working with so many businesses. In well, this I want to go there and kiss the inside of their big toe, okay? And, <laughs> and then, and like, buy everybody drinks or something because... I'm um, going to be speaking there in New York at the, at the 3C Summit with the founders and CEOs of Aurora, Canopy, like the biggest cannabis and hemp companies in the world right now. I'm one of the only female panelists. Ah, very interesting. It, so it, if you want to come, come and check us out. I would, I actually would, would like to come and I, cause I personally want to thank them. However, based on the continued traumas and fires of, you know, being, I couldn't even get a retail location, which is how I ended up in a business building. I mean, when you, <laughs> it, it, we, these are, I'm in an office building. Yeah. And we've never, we'll do, you know, over a million or plus to two or whatever in sales. We've never spent a dime on advertising and we don't even have a sign. So that our product has spoken for itself. I just bought I advertising this. for the very first time. So and it's killing me, but you've got to, you know, you got to do it. But because of those traumas, I mean, I'm prepared. I have two other backup processing. Yeah. One of the back, which I still have to pay monthly. One of that backup is uh, just visa pulled out and discover pulled out. So it only takes MasterCard, but I'm saying I'm prepared for square to say, you know, bye-bye and we're not going to do this anymore. I, I hope that they don't, but in case they do, we have Green Box and we have Fortress as backups. And we still have to pay their monthly fees. Oh, man. I got a couple others I'll give to you that don't have the crazy fees. There's no, like, minimum requirement that you have to be processing. There are a couple of really great solutions. So I'll, I'll share them with you. Also, I would like to feature you in our newsletter that we put out just to our customers. I would love uh -huh. to you know. I am just super grateful for your for everything that you've done you know and it's just inter it's just bizarre to think that here I was way you know over here you guys were in Colorado in this industry and I didn't even know it was an industry I didn't even know you existed there's something called NOCO the, yep. the big NOCO events yeah I didn't know there were people gathering for events and here I was I actually came out to to North Carolina to Charlotte to look at hosting a hemp expo, the global hemp expo. And I was going to do like a huge over there at the, can't remember the name of the place, but it was just outside of town. Like some of the big, you know, car shows and RV shows, they, they all happen over here at this space. And um, I, I was hired by a couple of folks to come out there and sort of analyze the opportunity to do a hemp expo. This was last year. And I, I was like, this is prime. They weren't quite ready for it, but I had, you know, I had just such an incredible opportunity to come in there. I'd still love to come in and do that. A lot of our focus in our business is education. So we've built a following of over a million people. We've impacted a little over 50 million people around the world in the last 18 months. 
we have a subscriber list of 350,000 and I get to work with brands and businesses like yours for, you know, targeted advertising. We also have a membership that called the Emerald Circle that saves you guys money on, you know, anything and everything that you can think of. We've created a network of relationships from around the world who are providing, you know, I mean, anything that you can think of for the cannabis and hemp space, we've put that network together to make sure that, you know, you guys aren't being taken advantage of for advertising, merchant processing, banking distribution, oh, stabilizing the supply chain. We're working with some of the top FDA compliance officers in the country so that we have some foresight on what's happening and when it's happening and I can give you guys a heads up and it's a pretty amazing network so we've just really focused on being a liaison a support system because we have you know been a part of this industry since 95 96 you know I grew up in the Humboldt Hills my husband moved there from Colorado to be a part of the cannabis movement. And we moved back into Colorado in 2009 to support legislation that would legalize cannabis. We owned and operated one of the first licensed businesses there. So we've really got to see this industry mm. born, you know, from the passion and necessity from the people in the hills who, you know, have been working with this plant long before it was a conversation to have in public. And now that it is a conversation to have in public, we, we like you, want to scream from the rooftops to say, you know, learn the truth about cannabis, understand what's in your bottle, know what delivery systems are going to be effective for you, you know, take responsibility for the wellness that you want to have and connect yourselves to a community, a mission, and be a part of a movement that will allow us to disrupt an otherwise broken system around healthcare, really take ownership of how we are caring for ourselves, the people that that we love, conditions we may be suffering from, but really setting a foundation that's solid and clear for the next generation so that they are empowered and not enslaved by, you know, the idea of wellness and balance in their life. So that's what we're doing and that's what we're up to. And we love having, you know, the opportunity to share the stories like yours, you know, women, men, it doesn't mean family owned businesses. Like what we are seeing is that this isn't just healing people, but it's healing families, bringing communities together and really dissolving very real problems like the opioid crisis, for instance, that are completely taking over our communities. And we're starting to see that little by little dissipate. And it's, it's an incredible thing to witness and to be a part of. So I'm going to be out your way. We're partnering with a, when you talk about the, the large companies that are going to be in New York, yeah. I've been approached by, by one of those. And we actually met yesterday and I'll be part of a farm in Nevada. Mm -hmm. One in Arizona, which is greenhouse. Mm -hmm. And then they just closed on a 25,000 square foot processing facility in Columbia, South Carolina, and got our license to grow in South Carolina. Gorgeous. So, yeah. And one of the cool things that I like, so that the supply chain, you brought up that word is mm. just out of the blue, you know, somebody would come who was every product that we have has my oil in it. So we're not buying a product. Even our bath bombs, the manufacturer who makes it buys the oil from me and then manufactures my products for me. Mm -hmm. Up until recently, the only product that we didn't have our plant material in it was our dog biscuits. And now we are manufacturing them in Lenore, North Carolina, a pet food manufacturer who I actually was a client. He was a client of mine is making, I mean, the carcass is coming through the back door. It's a 300,000 square foot facility. And it's all, everything's made with sweet potatoes and dead carcasses and onions and potato, you know, everything's fresh. And Yum. that was the only product that I didn't have any, my hands in. And so yeah. even now those dog treats, those are, and those are going into the grocery stores as well. And you're in a hundred locations plus now. Yes. And they have 210. So it's interesting because they are located in the most conservative areas of North Carolina. Like I had to go to the mountains just to go to their headquarters. Love it. So, and just Southern as the day is long, just, you know, <laughs> Southern. and so it's just every day 
I do kind of laugh a little bit because, you know, just being in the grocery store and, you know, coming across this in, in a What magazine where, is that? That, is that I, not, I mean, it, it just says Centennial Spotlight. I've never seen it before. Whoa, cool. I, I bought an extra copy. I can send it to you. I have to. That's so amazing. I love it. I'm going to get all of those women on my podcast. So what's, what's really going to, I think, set us apart. I don't need Prime Sunshine to be a giant commercial brand. That's mm -hmm. not ever what I set out. We just want to improve the quality of people's lives and grow organically. And that's really how we've grown. Mm -hmm. But having the supply chain in place and not having a manufacturer come up and say, you know what, I know you were paying this price, but we're going to boost it up 10 bucks now when I've already pre-sold, you know, orders to stores. So now we're making like our pain creams are made in house by a chemist whose name is Mike and he made drugs for the pharmaceutical industry for the first part of his career. So, you know, it is truly, you know, pharmacy formulated. It's just not something that we put on a, a label. I mean, it's, yeah. <laughs> so it's coming from our farm and it's being made by a pharmacist in our lab. You know, so if people want to get, if people want to get a hold of your products, where can they find, where can they find, can they find you online right now? Yeah, it's, it's just primesunshine.com. And we do have, we donate a lot. So if anybody who's listening or watching has their own disability, I have three brothers who are all disabled. Hmm. The one passed away from his disability, but that was really from a drug, but it will go down in the books that it was from his disability, but it was a pharmaceutical drug that killed my brother. Wow. And then I have two others that are also disabled who live paycheck to pay, well, disability check to disability check. So we do offer quite a large discount to folks who come in with their disability card or their food stamps card. Um, we have amazing. a military discount on our website as well. We just ask people to call in. And then if anybody is a Vietnam vet and they have are dealing with Agent Orange or exposed to Agent Orange, we will provide CBD for free for them. And we are very adamant about making sure anybody who needs the help and the assistance that can get it. It's not going to affect whether or not anybody on my staff or office eats dinner. You know, the, the fact that we can actually make somebody or help somebody or subject, move them in the direction of feeling better is, is more profitable than a dollar for us. So. I love that. There's a lot of companies that are building that sort of, you know, social responsibility into their businesses. I, I'm, I have to say that it was not a part of their fabric in the beginning, but we are starting to see more and more companies build these types of programs in. And I think it's fantastic, totally necessary. And for those of you guys who are tuning in and watching and want to take advantage of a program like this, or are just interested in looking at a product that can in fact transform, I mean, the consideration and care that you're putting into each phase of your product and how it's being made and manufactured is is just amazing. So for those of you guys who are looking for a product that can and will consistently provide you with the results that you're looking for, go ahead and check out Prime Sunshine. I think this will be an awesome. I, I can't wait to test. Are you gonna, I'm not to put you on the spot, but you're going to send me a care package, right? I would love to. And, you know, I, I will say in advance, ours really, most brands are kind of yellowish mm -hmm. or some even clear. Ours is green. The color of a plant is green. That's the color of a plant. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I, you actually have full spectrum. <laughs> yes. And, you know, I, I'm amazed in, in our, our creams. We also have 26 essential oils in it, like pine needle oil, oregano oil, stereophone oil, 26 different essential oils plus 500 milligrams of cream. And what we do every single day is we have a buy one, get one half off. So if your funds are tight, get with a buddy. And if you do like the 2,400 milligram, when you do the buy one, get one half off, it's 50% cheaper than in a store. And it lasts a heck of a long time. And it comes out to be as expensive as our lowest milligram. So milligram for milligram and volume. So even though you're spending a little bit more money, you, you end up saving money or buying something that is equivalent to a lower milligram strength. 
So get a buddy, you know, but we do offer the buy one, get one half off, which is cool. You should put two in your cart and the second one is always taken off 50% at the checkout. And then we do free shipping. So on all orders, you can just use the shipping code free shipping at checkout. Love it. And then, you know, I would also suggest to, you know, we resell if, if, if somebody has a favorite store and they would like to see our, our brand in their store, let us know or let the store know. We have a 24-hour a day, 365-day-a-week customer a service year. support group on Facebook. It's closed. You have to prove that you're a Prime Sunshine customer in order to be in it. We have a very famous oncologist from Harvard in there that answers questions. We've got two different pharmacists. We have uh, life coaches. We have nutritionists. We have one psychiatrist. We have two veterinarians. We have registered nurses. We have some cannabis nurses in there. And what we do is we just, as we get new information, like I just got a text from my office, Trump is going to ban vape products today, like across the country, which will also include CBD. I just got this on my, on my text as I'm sitting here. People can go into our group and ask, you know, can I not get the vape anymore? So you, you you always have support from a doctor, from a pharmacist, from a psychiatrist. Obviously, they can't give medical advice, but you just don't. It's not like going into a store and buying a bottle and then you say, the CBD stinks and it's not working for me. And, and we've seen when people, that's happened, what we'll do is they come on to the customer service group. We find out how much they're taking, when they're taking it, when their pain levels are worse, and then we create a dosing schedule or one of the physicians or pharmacists will create a dosing schedule around their own personal pain schedule. So you're not, you're not out there on your own. You definitely have continued support whenever you need it. And it's interesting because those people around the world are in that group. You can always tell who's a new customer because they go on and they post, I just started and they're looking for, you know, their life to change. And then now <laughs> we, we've educated our customers who also are educating our new customers. So that's been kind of fun to see. Really, really cool. We and I would a bit- invite you to, I'll invite you to. I would love group. to come in. Yeah. And I would love for you to post, like when we found out about microdosing, we posted about microdosing and that was very helpful for me when I was having panic attacks. So now we, you know, so people like you, I would love you to post. It's invitation only. And you could, you know, as long as it's people who buy Prime Sunshine in stores are in there as well. So there's no marketing, there's no sales. It's just education yeah. and teaching people how to use cannabis. Yeah, totally. Would love to share a little bit about our story. My, my journey with cannabis started when I was in a near fatal surfing accident and I went through years and hours, tens of thousands of dollars with the medical system with no success. And at the peak of my illness was a hundred pounds overweight on seven different medications and really just kind of waiting for my life to end. This was in Say, California? Mm-hmm. Oh, we would have probably been friends. I, w- <laughs> I was, you know, <laughs> I was a 17 year old kid. I was a 17 year old kid. And I quite literally remember going from being this like active, thriving, happy, social girl to just being like, literally, how many of these do I have to take to just end it? right now, you know, and that was really my thought process. And Mm -hmm. I was very discouraged. Mm -hmm. I was very discouraged and, you know, didn't think that there was any possibility, you know, of healing, even though I had used cannabis recreationally, I never really understood it, you know, as a medicine until God bless my mom, because she never gave up on me. She, but she introduced us to a holistic neurologist who introduced me to my endocannabinoid system, taught me about microdosing, phytonutrients. How many years um, ago was that? Strain selection. Let's see, I'm 34 now, so 15, 17 years ago. That was California. In California. And, you know, that really started my journey. And I went from being the sort of like, you know, concert consumer, rebellious teenage, you know, pot smoker to a public advocate for the medical benefits and use of cannabis. And then when my rights as a California patient were violated and I was arrested for, I was pulled over for speeding, but arrested for possession, even though I had all of my required paperwork, I went into, you know, a three-year battle with the legal system for my rights to safe access and submitted 
a report of my experience in their PC 1000 program, which was built for first time offenders. And even though it was built for first time offenders, we were seeing repeat offense and increased you know, felonies. So if somebody was arrested for a misdemeanor possession charge, they'd be back six months later with a felony narcotic charge. And so the things that I shared with them on, you know, the exposure, the way that people are grouped, how much time they spend in rehab, you know, how much time they spend in the company of other, you know, addicts and things like that when you're, when you're just a first time cannabis, you know, offender was really off balance. And so anyways, through, through my recommendations, they made some changes to the program. We saw a 30% increase in success for people who were coming through the program. And the judge wrote me a letter recommending me to the Department of Revenue, which is how I started my journey in legislative development here in Colorado to support the, you know, legalization of cannabis. And you know, coming from somebody who didn't go to college, I barely graduated high school. I'm ADD, I'm ADHD, all of the odds were against me. Nobody would ever believe that I could run my own business. I was similar where they were like, you're a hairdresser, you should just keep doing hair. And I'm like, no, there's obviously a higher purpose here. There's something else to be done. There's work to be done in the world. And I became very, very passionate and really committed to the excellence and professionalism that in which this industry operates, because that is what it's going to take to have global adoption. It, that is what's going, that is what it's going to take in order for our families, our communities, our municipalities to stop judging us and accept us as a community of thriving, positive contributors to our to our society and take us seriously as an industry. And we're getting ready to come head to head with a lot of the governing municipalities like the FDA, the FTC, you know, local and federal governments when it comes to the conversation of, you know, how the United States is going to legalize cannabis and hemp. And I want to be a professional representative of the growth in this industry and the professionals who are pioneering you know, these products and services on behalf of their families and communities. So here we are fighting the good fight. And that's how, that's how my journey started with it. And I, and I haven't looked back, although I've been looking for, you know, I've looked for an exit before because it's not easy. It's not easy and it's not glamorous, but it's worth every second of it. Yeah. And it, it is interesting because it's that you said that because people go like, wow, you're in the cannabis business. I go, ah, <laughs> yes, it looks like there's just these little bottles with labels, but you know, all that comes with it is, you know, there's no, and, and you know what, you don't get that in college. Sorry. No, you certainly don't. You certainly don't. So, Any final thoughts for our community before we end today's episode? Well, I would like to spend 10 seconds to say thank you for the incredible work that you have done. You know, and shame on me for not knowing you all existed all these years. And I was really felt very alone. I don't feel alone anymore and isolated and hidden. And I was so, gosh, you know, without you, we, you know, I don't know what it would look like. So I appreciate your perseverance. I appreciate your desire to tell truth to power because that's what we do every day. Hmm. It's not like there's a promotion, you know, your paycheck's not going to get any bigger. What you're doing is a service for the generations of people that, you know, we won't be here to see. And, you know, the two generations from where, well, I'm 56. So you're, I could technically be your mom. Right. But the two two generations from where we're all from where we're at now, they're not even going to know that that we existed, or mm -hmm. that I existed. And the only fear, of course, that I have is, and it's probably going to come true. You know, I don't know how long there is a market for smaller startups and businesses like mine. Mm -hmm. I'm just lucky to have one before anyone ever heard of the product, right? And I'm lucky to have been eaten alive you know, or attacked or whatever you want to call it, you know. So all of the bad things for anybody listening, if 
you're experiencing pain, if you're experiencing depression, if you're experiencing darkness in your life, just know that the only thing that's constant is change and it's available for you. And if you have a dream and you have a desire, just keep, you know, you hear all these people like Brian, you know, all these people say things, keep doing it. But the truth is, is you don't really know the lessons in your pain. And the lessons are in our pain and in the journey of our pain, whether it's physically, mental, spiritual. So enjoy the pain that you're in and allow the lessons to bloom from, from the pain. Love it. For those of you who are tuning in to the hemp revolution, thank you so much for your time and attention. This is the biggest disruption to the healthcare industry that we will ever witness in our lifetime, along with the fastest growing cash rich industry blooming right before our very eyes. The more that you can participate through education, liking and sharing content just like this, the better that we will do in impacting millions of people's lives around the world. If you are a budding entrepreneur or an established brand and you are looking for tools, resources, or relationships to help you grow and scale quickly, shortcutting that learning curve, check us out at theemeraldcircle.com for more episodes of The Hemp Revolution talking to many of the CEOs who are pioneering this space, as well as getting in touch with any of our coaching or advertising opportunities so you can share more of your glory with our community. Also, if you are a patient looking for a recommendation on products you can trust to deliver the results you're looking for, check us out on medicalsecrets.com. I'm your host, Sonia Gomez, and we'll see you on the next episode of The Hemp Revolution. Thanks so much, Ellen. It was wonderful to talk with you. Thank you. And thank you for all that you do. Keep going. I'm very appreciative of you. Yes, you too, mama. Thanks for listening to another rock star episode of the Hemp Revolution podcast. I'm your host, Sonia Gomez. And just for you, we took notes on this episode along with the links and other resources mentioned inside of today's show. Get them for free right now by going to theemeraldcircle.com. Now, if you want more on this, please subscribe to the show on Apple Podcast or wherever you like to listen, and you will be automatically entered in to our monthly giveaway where you can get swag bags, all kinds of cool gifts and discounts from our guests and exclusive offers that are only mentioned right here in the Hemp Revolution podcast. I can't wait for you to share this with your friends. With your help, we've been able to impact millions of people's lives around the world with the truth about hemp and cannabis. And we know that you love us so much that you're going to leave a review and rate us right now on your favorite platform to absorb content just like this. Now, we challenge you to dream big and love the life that you live. Thanks so much, and we hope to see you on our next episode of the Hemp Revolution podcast. Ciao for now.